Welcome to our incisive agents and investors from across the country. Today is Thursday, July 21st, 2022. And this is All the Leads Mastermind podcast number 387. Bruce, I know we got a great speaker today, so I will turn it over to you. All right. So I'm going to do my little version of the intro that many of you have heard multiple times. And it's to tell you why Jim uses outrageous adjectives at the beginning. So if you've never been here, like our guest, Greg, and some of you that are joining us for the first time, um, we've got this thing where Jim uh, Jim greets the agents and investors differently every time. And he is flat out of adjectives. So I think at this point, he's just inventing words uh, in his greeting. And we do not allow him to use the same one twice. Um, I've caught him using the same one five or six times, and he always swears that he, he isn't. But anyway, that's Jim. For those of you that are joining for the very first time, you've never joined us, you're here to talk probate. Um, we welcome that discussion. We welcome your discussion on leads. Um, we do want to start and uh, take up a big chunk of our podcast and our show today uh, with our guest, Greg McDaniel. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, someone that I consider to be a rock star in the business. Um, we're not going to uh, spend a lot of time with Greg camping out on probate because uh, Greg has a lot of different spokes to his business and has been in it for a while. Um, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Greg and just kind of say welcome and uh, ask you to give a, a brief interview uh, or a brief, not, not interview, you're going to interview yourself today, Greg, how's that sound? <laughs> a brief introduction of yourself, your background and what your business looks like today. Bruce, thank you so much. Gentlemen, I appreciate you guys inviting me on to the show. I look forward to bringing hopefully some value to anybody who's listening to my voice right now. Um, my name is Greg McDaniel. I've been in the real estate business for 23 years as an active agent, been in it probably more, more like 30, 35 years because my father's been in it for 57 years. And he recruited me in high school to do open houses and flyers and door knocking and everything else. Um, so I... Um, when I got into the business, I failed out of high school. I failed out of college, two years deep. Started working in a warehouse. I uh, thought it was the coolest thing ever, but I was like the grunts, 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 grunt. They invented a bottom cellar for me to live in and work in. Um, my father finally convinced me to come work with him, uh, and I finally did. And I started doing uh, door knocking and cold calling out of the out of the gate. Uh, I've done over at least. 200,000 door knocks and over 600,000 uh, cold calls. Uh, we work primarily in a luxury market and it's just the market that we're in. So our price points, when we talk about them, uh, is just where we, where we are. But I mean, it's the cool thing about this is that it doesn't matter if you're in a higher bracket or a lower bracket of price points, people still put their pants on one, one leg at a time. They still use the bathroom at least a couple of times a day. They still have, they have wants, needs, desires, and fears. And so I've learned in how to tap into that and how to extract information out of them in a positive manner so that I can bring value to their lives. Um, you know, I have a podcast called Real Estate Uncensored. I think we have over like 1,100 episodes at this point, been, been doing it for six years. So I have a little bit of experience in regards to hanging out with incredible incredible human beings like you guys, uh, and then hopefully influencing someone to go out there and put a little money in their pocket. So that is uh, me in a nutshell. By the way, I love swimming. You love so, swimming? Yeah, I'm a water wow. dog. I All love right. water. <laughs> all right. Uh, we've got some Midwest folks here that probably don't know what that's all about. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's called a pool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So that's Greg. I want to do um, kind of introduce you guys to Greg. This is the type of person that I like to learn from to get around uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of folks here. Uh, those of you that are new into the All the Leads Orbit and new to the podcast may not know this, but uh, those of you that have been with us for a while, maybe you've attended some training or come to some coaching calls or the podcast. Um, if you want to know how I grow, where I get my ideas from, my inspiration from, is I go out and I find people like Greg and I get into their orbit. Um, if you want to grow, 
find some folks that are at a place that you're not and get in their orbit. I used to be very intimidated when I'd meet someone that uh, that, that was at a, a higher place in their business than I was, and I'd stand back. I might listen from afar. And I'll tell you, that's a great way to stay mediocre or stay where you are. Find someone that's achieved something that's better than you and is achieving and is striving harder and taking risks uh, risks, and get around, the, around them, have those conversations. Um, that's exactly what I do with folks like Greg. That's how we connected. Uh, but I want to find something else out about Greg here really quickly. Uh, and again, those of you that are j- just joining, slightly different approach to this episode today. Uh, we are available to take your uh, probate questions. So please, if you do have probate specific questions, you can throw them up. Uh, Greg has built a different kind of business that I wanted to kind of expose some of you guys to. So just because we, Greg and I might not be chatting about probate, please still bring those questions because we're, we're here to help you and here to answer those. Uh, as Greg just mentioned, people put their pants on one leg at a time. It doesn't matter if you're dealing with luxury home sellers, luxury buyers, probate sellers, divorce, uh, divorce leads. It doesn't matter where you're getting your business from. Human psychology is still human psychology. And uh, you're going to learn a lot today. But I want to know from Greg what it was like uh, at, your, at your lowest. You know, not everyone here, some people here are extremely successful. Some people here have hit some lows. Some people here are successful and they're successful on accident and they're going to see some lows in their business over time. I want to hear what yours were like and how you pushed through those things. Your sound went out. Okay, hold on. All right, unmute. There you go. Okay. Um, guys, really, really fast. Um, because we've had some uh, Zoom bombers that come on and say some absolutely terrible things, if you raise your hand, uh, we will ask you to unmute yourself. We're not going to allow you to just, just unmute yourself at will. So please raise your hand, and, and that's how you ask your questions, because we'll ask you to unmute. That's what happened to Greg. All right, yeah. go ahead, Greg. All right, so ask, ask me the question again, because I was desperately trying to unmute myself here. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, what were the, uh, and starting out or, or at any points in your career, did you, did you run into any walls? Did you experience any lows and how did you work through those? Oh my God. Yes. Um, I, I was playing on the horse when I first got into the business. I was like uh, 20, 21 years old. Um, and I was making healthy six figure income. And I'm like, what's the problem with this whole working thing? This is so simple. I just, I just make money. It falls off trees. Then 2008 came around and I lost everything. I lost my multi-million dollar home. I lost my condo. I lost my two cars. I lost my girlfriend at the time because she said I didn't make enough money for her, which is ironic because there's a lot of stories there. Um, <laughs> you know what? And so I had a, a decision to make. And it was either to sit up and stand up and be a man uh, and and or just go be a greeter at Walmart and just take it on the chin. So I decided to do the first and I started working seven days a week, about 14, 15, almost 20 hours a day some days, um, cold calling, door knocking, handwriting letters, following up on the database, you know, just putting your, 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 your hands into the mud and really mucking it up and going for it. Cause I had nothing, I had nothing else. I had $2 and 38 cents to my name uh, in my bank account. I had $35 total net worth. I had nothing. I had nowhere to go. I could only buy myself $50 of gas a week. So I had to be very conscious of where I would go. So I made it strategic and I met my team every single morning at 6 a.m to set up a, a, a battle plan to go out and door knock, then do the calls, then do the letters to the people we met on the doors and you know letters to the people that we talked to. Um, that was b- before social media. So it wasn't something we could do at that point. So we went a little bit more air quotes, old school. And when I got to a hard point in my life, I would go back and honestly, I'd go back and t- talk to my parents. And my, since my dad's been doing this for almost 58, almost 60 years, I would say, dad, this is the situation I'm in. This is, this is my scenario. He's like, okay, this is what you do. 
So I, I was blessed with the opportunity to learn from a master in the industry, broker in three different states, um, how to walk through the fire. And a lot of folks that don't have that ability right now, um, you do actually, because you can go and talk to your broker or your controller uh, and say, this is my scenario, what's going on? Or reach out to somebody like myself. I will take a call from anybody who has a question about real estate, and I will take the time to have a conversation with you and then refer you out to somebody else. That is how I learned. I sat at the feet of masters and I sucked it in. And um, my, uh, a lot of you guys might not know this, but uh, Star Power uh, was founded by a guy named Howard Britton. This is years and years and years ago. It's been purchased by another guy. It's been bastardized. Uh, but it, when, we fir when we first started going to it, my father looked at me and goes, Greg, I'm like, yeah, dad. He's like, you're not here to party. You're here to learn. And I want you to suck in everything you can possibly, you know, you know take into your system. Uh, and don't be intimidated by numbers. I'm like, what do you mean don't be intimidated by numbers? He's like, you're going to hear a lot of properties being sold like 200, 500, 1,000 units a year. They're selling at two to 300,000. We're selling at a million. So we can do 10 times the amount in one sale. So just keep that in mind. And I'm like, oh, okay. But I went out there with an open mind and I just started taking in all this content. And if you guys could see my desk, I have books everywhere that I read from all the time, taking in content. And I know I went on a tangent on that, so I'm going to shut up and bring it back to you. No, content. Speaking of content, I, I absolutely love taking in content. I'm a big proponent to everyone that's hearing our voices right now and everybody that gets into the ATL orbit, a big proponent of, of taking in content and then going out and duplicating that content. One of the challenges that a lot of agents and a lot of investors and a lot of the people that that uh, kind of follow us and get into this prospecting and this uh, business growth game do is they'll take content, 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 and they're just constantly taking in, but they get stagnant. It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like the Dead Sea in Israel. You're you know what, always you... taking something in and you never replicate it. You never put it into action. So um, those of you that are hearing that love what Greg's saying about content, I'm going to challenge you to take it a step further and take some imperfect action based on the things that you're, that you're reading, the things that you're listening to, the people that you're learning from. Take action and you don't know, worry Bruce, about you know, sucking Bruce, a little bit. Bruce, the funny thing about that, what you're saying is uh, when I do coaching and training, what I tell people is that you have self-assurance, then you have shelf-assurance. So you can be confident in yourself, but then shelf assurance is when you, like you say, like you go buy a program or something like that, or a book and you put it on your shelf and you feel it really good. You can look at it, but you never take any action on it. Then you're like, well, what in the heck is going on? Why can't my business grow? It's like mother blank, blank. You didn't read the stinking book. You didn't watch the, you know, the, the criteria, you didn't, you know, review the podcast, you didn't go to the seminar, you didn't do something to grow yourself. I mean, it could be as simple as uh, drinking one cup of coffee a day versus four or five cup of, cups of coffee a day. There's a guy named uh, BJ Fogg, he's a PhD. And he's written several books and, you know, TED Talk and everything else. And he hated brushing his teeth and flossing, like hated it. And so what he did is that he started with one tooth a day, just flossing one tooth, that's it. And he was done. Then next day, one tooth. And then it grew to the fact that he flossed like three times a day. Now he's obsessed with it. So when it comes to prospecting, you don't have to jump in the deep water. You don't have to do 600,000 phone calls, 200,000 plus door knocks. Go, go knock one door, go make one phone call, you know, go call your mom. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Just start the process and your business will thrive. You have to give it a little time, but it will grow. Go. I mean, I've gotten more business from sitting in my spa and, you know, walking my dog in the dog park. I went on a $3.1 million listing yesterday uh, for walking my dog with my buddy who is a contractor. He brought me in uh, to consult on this deal. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how does this work? 
It's just following what you like to do, making friends, influence people in, in, in a positive way. My father, his, his brother died of polio. And so he went out there in Boulder, Colorado, and he started door knocking. Uh, this was when there were rotary phones, by the way. Um, he would go out there with his, with his galoshes on, his $50 suit. That's not a joke. And he would door knock. And his mindset was this. And this is the part I want you to take away, to, take away from this. He's like, everybody likes me. They just don't know me yet. And since his brother died of polio, he said, I'm a doctor. I have a cure for you. I'm here to help you. Once you shift away from, oh my God, 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 I need a lead to, you know what? I'm here to serve you. How can I bring value to you? All of a sudden, your business will flourish in a very fast way. Mm -hmm. Service guys. Um, so Chuck, uh, one of our coaches, Chuck Sirk, uh, always says to lead with a helping hand. And that's ultimately the um, Ultimately, the goal here is you are leading from a place of service. Um, Chuck, I, I want to give you an opportunity. If you have any questions, um, I, you unmuted yourself. Um, do you have any questions or comments you'd like to throw in? No, not right off the bat. But I, I think, you know, the other the other way to phrase, I think what Greg was saying is, you know, we're calling old friends we've never met yet. You know, that's how kind of how I look at it from a standpoint of cold prospecting and and cold calling is. I'm calling friends. They just don't know it yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I, I've i traveled the world with people that I've met door knocking. So, Chuck, I think you're 100% right. You're calling old. I love that terminology. You're calling old friends you haven't met yet. I'm. Can I steal that? Because that was awesome. Cool. <laughs> Amazing. Absolutely. So, Steal with pride. The, the thing here and in the probate space, a lot of folks come to me and they, they, or Chuck or any of our, any of our coaches here. And uh, they're always kind of saying, you know, um, what's the easiest way to get started in probate. And we often say one of the first places you need to, uh, first things you need to do is you start, need to start talking to the people that you know about your probate business. Why? Not that you're not working your leads. You're absolutely working your leads. But a lot of times you go out and you start talking to your sphere of influence and your friends and the people that you know, and you start to tell them that you're uh, developing this niche of, of probate or this niche of helping uh, uh, divorce leads. Okay, those are new, new to us. And you're talking to people that already know, like, and trust you. And so often as I've done this, I've heard people that have, that have come back to me and they've said, I wish I'd known that you did that last year. Your service is so valuable. And if you start, by receiving that, those affirmations and that, uh, those rave reviews from people who haven't even used you before, it's immediately going to boost your confidence. Um, you're going to start to get, uh, get business in from friends. They're going to start to think of you and the niche that you're pursuing. And once they start thinking about you, it's going to increase that confidence. You're going to be able to go out. You're going to be able to door knock. You're going to be able to put your mail campaign into place. You're going to be able to make those calls because you're going to see how valuable your service really is to the people that, that need it. Those, those people that might resist you at first, it's only because they don't know you yet. That's it. At least that's what it should be. If you're a shark, you're not in it to serve, it's probably not the niche for you. But if you're in it to serve, now you just have to go out and develop the techniques of building relationships and rapport with folks. So, Greg, from the standpoint of technique, building rapport, what do you do besides taking in content? What do you do to improve in your business? Because I'm sure you're not a stagnant person. You're probably constantly trying to grow. The, that is an accurate assessment. Um, some of the stuff that I'm going to go really, really basic, really quickly here for you guys and gals. Um, if you want to grow your business and you want to get out there uh, and really talk to new folks. Um, I was taught a long time ago that if you have, and this is a set of, and what you guys are looking at me, this is a set of 25 business cards that I have, right? So if you want to grow your business quickly, do a several different things. So tactical assault on the marketplace, go outside on Monday, turn left, hand out 25 business cards to every single human being you come in contact with Tuesday, 
turn turn right and go out and hand out 25 business cards and don't come back until you've handed them all out and ask for the business social media um get on there and do two posts a day at a minimum one personal one professional so one talking about probate and how you can serve people second one is going to be something personal something like that you so you can be humanized so like you're walking your goldfish petting the cat you know going for a swim doing whatever right that is another thing that's really incredible and then go talk to local businesses so funeral homes you know you know restaurants and see how you can benefit them because they're going to have contacts with people that you could never imagine my boy simon who i went down and did a uh, interview with yesterday dude I, like i told you in the beginning of the interview um today uh, he called me in out of the blue because he and i talked about dog poop and you know you know best diets and walking leashes and everything else and we just connected and we drank we drink beer together and got you know some tacos yesterday and i have a potential 3.1 million dollar listing based upon that i got a 4.7 million dollar listing uh based upon talking about race cars oil and gas stations it's really simple don't overthink it just get out there and start communicating your tribe's going to find you when they find you they're going to latch on to you and then they're going to give you referrals but it, when they get when you get the business you have to ask for the further business who it's not do you know somebody it's who do you know that i can serve to the same level that you're experiencing right now that will help you guys get your your business up and running very very quickly and believe me handing out business cards um the first time i did it i took a deep breath and i was freaked out i was at uh, i don't know if you guys are you know have a we call it it's called trader joe's it's a supermarket here in the area and i talked to this young kid and i'm like hey man um here's my business card uh, i'm a real estate agent did uh, are you thinking about buying or selling and he looked at me like i was uh, an alien and he's like no but my parents are thinking about selling and i'm like holy mackerel this works i had a banker run up to me um and uh you know get in my face he's like i know who you are i'm like oh dang it did i date your daughter in high school what happened here <laughs> and he was like no i watch all your stuff on youtube so I would start creating a YouTube channel, guys. You know, figure out how to create channel tags and video tags. And if you can go to Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com, you can find someone that can do all of this for you for a couple of dollars. It's not a big thing. All you have to do is create the content, keep pushing it out on a schedule. Like this, this show is done on a schedule. You're, you're, the, the listeners know when you're going to be coming live and know when this is going to be going out. The, you need to be doing the same thing for your local marketplace. Become the, the mayor or mayor at, of your area. Interviews, interview different business owners, different uh, restaurants, different uh, HOA owner, uh, heads of HOAs, you know, talk about the community, you know, Google what's going on in the neighborhood, talk about the parks. That kind of stuff will open up so that when someone needs to go through probate, they're, uh, pro probate, they're going to look at you and be like, oh, I've been following Bruce forever. This fool's killing it. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call him. There's a guy, but ironically, his name's Greg. And he's an Asian gentleman out of Las Vegas. Now, I found him on Clubhouse. And he and I became friends. This guy and his partner go out to all these crazy restaurants and crazy events and venues and stuff that you would never see on the strip. And I'm following him. And I will tell you one thing. If I ever moved to Vegas, I would use him as an agent because he has the insight in what's going on. And the people who need to go through probate or any other real you know, resale uh, uh, option, uh, they're looking for, for the expert. So yeah, okay, I'm off my soapbox. Well, I love what you're saying. Uh, one of my favorite books is a book by Seth Godin. It's called uh, Lynchpin. And it's essentially establishing yourself as the go-to yep. for everyone in your community. And there's no way to establish yourself as the go-to if number one, you don't have your team built. So you need your vendor team built that's circling you that you know who to refer to. 
Number two is you need to talk about it. You need to promote their businesses. You need to be that person that your uh, followers, your audience, whether it's a sphere of influence audience or someone that's just watching you from a distance on YouTube or because they're getting your postcards and your letters, if those people are your audience and if you're constantly educating and informing them through different channels, they're going to reach out to you. I like in the agent DNA, I talk, uh, talk a lot about the two types of audience. You have your connected audience, those, those folks that, uh, that know you and you know them. They should be bringing you business. They should know you're in the probate niche. They should know every, every niche that you're in in business. They should know about it. Then you have your casual audience. These are the folks that you're never going to know have been following. These are the folks that, uh, that I've shown up to their houses. They've called me and said, hey, we're looking for an agent or we're looking for someone to buy our house as an investor. And I show up and I think it was an out of the blue call. And all of a sudden they pull out a stack of letters and postcards of mine that they've been saving for a year. They've been saving it. And I had no idea that they were even getting my postcards. Okay or my letters, or they say, I've been watching your YouTube channel. I've been listening to your podcast, whatever it is, you need to work on equally building that connected audience that you have and your casual audience of folks that, uh, that you don't even know are following you. And if you don't put content out, like Greg's just talking about, uh, then you're not going to have a casual audience to come in and start interacting with you that wants to use your business. The one of the One of my favorite things is for someone to say, I can't believe I got you. This is such an honor. And I always feel like, oh, gosh, I don't know why, why it's an honor that for you to be talking to me. I'm just I'm just Bruce. But you don't get that without kind of putting value out to people ahead of the value that you're going to receive in return. So I I really, um, really resonate with with some of the things that Greg said. I know that Jim um, also had a question for Greg or a couple of questions. Jim, if you'd unmute yourself. There you go. I'm unmuted. Greg, um, I, I couldn't agree more with everything you said. And we've had kind of uh, parallel career paths. Um, they don't need to hear about me. But in college, I knocked on doors for 80 hours a week. I got into real estate and I made 100 cold calls a day every day for 800 days. And um, people used to say to me, after a very short time, they used to ask me like, oh, you're just a natural born salesman. How'd you ever get so good at this? And I think, I think people, in it, I did the education, everything you, know, you talked about, but I think people discount the value of actually getting out there and doing it. I used to tell people, you do anything 10,000 times. Heck, in real estate, if you do something 100 times you're going to be way, way ahead of your competition. So everything you said is invaluable. And combining that with actually taking action, it's such a simple thing. I, I'm curious if you had the same responses and if you've had the same percept, you know, perception and experience. In regards to being out in the field and kind of just, you know, knuckling up and, and going yep. for it. Yep. Yeah. Um, like you, um, I, I bought a triple line dialer um when i as soon as i could afford it so i was doing 500 to 750 phone calls a day um i do it in batches because your brain would melt my highest amount in one day was 1131 phone calls and i just wanted to go watch paint dry at the end of that day i'm gonna just give me a bud light and just I'm, i'm out but um there's a lot of good stuff here. I mean, doing the, the calls, 100, 500, 700, whatever the number is going to be for all you ladies and gentlemen, um, don't forget to, to be personable. Uh, if you really want to get get into these people's lives, I, I use a company called Send Out Cards. And what I've done is I will go on to social media and people are like, oh, social media is a waste of time. And I'm like, well, no, not, not really. So if I go out and I see Jim and he's in Hawaii right now, apparently with his background, um, and I take a screenshot of him uh, off of one of his social media accounts and I put that on a custom send out card and say, dude, Jim, hope you're get, not getting burned. Enjoy the beach. Hope to hopefully catch a beer with you later when you get home and you send that to them. It is something that I've gone to my clients' houses and they have had these cards on their on their mantles for years because it was it was relational to them. Um, 
And it's, it's just about being, a, they call it social media for a reason. Go and be social. Go out there and have fun. J just just re-engage. I, I have people following me from high school. I haven't talked to in literally 20 years, but they follow everything that I do because I'm relatable to them. And then I re-engage with them. And I say, hi, how are you? What's new? What's happening? And I'm like, how can I bring value to your life? What's your business looking like? You know, who are you looking to connect with? All of a sudden, my network just expanded exponentially because then they're going to tell all of our other high friends from high school that that he uh, we were in contact. So that hopefully that answered the question for you, Jim. Mm -hmm. I, I love the expression knuckle up. <laughs> Sometimes you knuckle up and you just do some work. Um, and I do want to take it um, in a uh, in a direction with with regard to knuckling up. I want to ask a question, but before I do, I just want to open it up to some of our um, some of our our listeners here. Um, if you guys have uh, probate related questions, divorce lead related questions, or just business growth questions, whether it would be for me, Chuck, Jim, Tim, or Greg. Um, we are here to take those. If you are listening live on Facebook or YouTube, you can chat those in. If you're here live with us on Zoom, um, please go ahead and raise your hand. Uh, we'll call on you for those questions. Um, I do not want to make anyone here feel like uh, this is not a probate conversation. It, it, uh, it is. Um, we're here to answer some of those probate questions if you have them, but we wanted to give, give a different spin today on just doing the work. So if you would raise your hands or throw those questions in, we'll take those in just a second. But I want to uh, talk to Greg here really, really briefly about uh, how important rituals are in his life. Um, I, I, I have ADHD. A lot of you guys already know that. Um, I fly by the seat of my pants in a lot of areas. And, and for someone like me, it's especially important. To build out some rituals and I, i'd like to find out what some of those rituals what some of those daily activities are for greg what's your day look like <sighs> that's a great question so my day generally starts at about 5 15 in the morning so i get up the alarm goes off three times i finally get up at like 5 35 5 40. Uh, i get up you know you know use the restroom blah 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 uh, then I go in and I make coffee and I start making a lunch for my girlfriend so I can get her out the door. She's a doctor and she's like, she sleeps in, she's a sleepy head. So I get, I get that out. I get her the coffee. I get the sandwiches and the, in the, in the apples made. Um, when she leaves, take the dog out, we go for, we go for a ball chase and a walk around the park and, you know, poop and pee, you know, walk, get him comfortable, bring him back. And then I jump into doing prospecting um and lead follow up and you know negotiations on different deals immediately out of that i'm not even dressed yet i'm not even showered i'm just straight out of, out of the shoot um and that is after after that gets taken place then i'll jump in the shower or if i'm at my condo uh here in walnut creek i'll jump in the pool go for a swim uh go for a walk you know something like that kind of get the blood pumping then come back and I'll start hitting the phone, start hitting the emails, start hitting the, you know, in the, you know, callbacks, whatever, whatever the day calls for, you know, podcasts like this one. And so for me, I live and die by my Google calendar. And Bruce, when you and I were talking the other day, I just got a new phone because my other one died and I was freaking the blank out because I couldn't get my Google calendar on. Finally got that dang thing up and running. Thank you, goodness. Um, so it, it's much more comforting so that I can sit and check and check my, my day. But the number one thing is that I calendar everything. If you're not on my calendar, you don't exist and a story. And I also, for me, where I am in my business, I do one important thing a day and the rest of the day is mine. And I've decided that because when I first got in the business 23 years ago, I tried to pack my calendar full of everything I could possibly do. And I got worn out. My, my father, he, he's had his retina detached from his eye uh, twice in his life because of stress, bleeding from his eye. And I'm like, ooh, that doesn't look good. I'm like that, no nose, no nose, no nose. And so I decided to build, and this is the one thing I learned from Howard Britton. 
you build your business around your lifestyle. So if you want to wear a three-piece suit, dude, knock yourself out. If you want to wear an expensive dress, knock yourself out. But if you want to wear flip-flops and you know shorts, like, like I do on listing appointments, dude, knock yourself out. But you have to build your life, build your business around your lifestyle because you will burn out. No matter if you're doing probate, if you're doing divorce, if you're doing retail, if you're doing new sales, it doesn't matter. Just make sure that your lifestyle is intact. You have a good relationship with your spouse or significant other. They're intact and they, they're, they're supporting you. Or if you're single, dude, that's fine too. No, 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 no harm there. Um, but just make sure that whatever you want to do is what you want to do, not what you feel you have to do. Very big difference. When I when I first got into it 23 years ago, um, I felt I had to be my my father. And so I went out and bought the same shirt, same pants, same shoes. I got I, I, same uh, cologne. I, co- I you know, parted my hair the same way he did. And I flipping hated myself. And then one day I said, you know what? I love my father. I'm not my father. So I started just being me. You know, I curse a lot, which I'm not going to do on your show. Um, you know, and I, I wear very casual clothing. You, as you guys can tell right now, I go to I, I went to a three million dollar listing appointment yesterday wearing a T-shirt and a baseball hat and in shorts and flip flops. And I tell people I'm going to be casual and they're like, oh, we're, we're casual, too. So don't be afraid of being who you are. A lot of us are afraid of being you know, kind of that like casual self, the Saturday, Sunday afternoon self. But if you bring value to their lives, it doesn't matter what you look like because they want an outcome in their lives that's going to benefit them. So if you can do it in flip-flops, you can do it in a three-piece suit, you can do it in a high, 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 I don't know what a good dress is. I literally have no idea what what that brand would be. But ladies, you understand where I'm going with this. Just go out there and have fun. Start having fun in the industry and as soon as you start having fun guess what they're gonna have fun they're gonna be relaxed and it's gonna be a much easier transition versus okay sir uh ma'am uh we are going to be doing a b c d e f and g and this is gonna be the manner or it's gonna be like you know what guys (sighs) this is what this is our success that we've had with our clients in the past you know what, how would you like to proceed? You always ask questions, you never dictate. Because once you start dictating to somebody, now you become a boss, not a leader. Once you become a leader, you ask questions and you get the feedback. And so that's what I've been getting back from from, from my experiences. Bruce, back to you. Awesome, awesome. So we do have a couple of questions. Um, one's gonna be for Greg. Um, I've got a, a, a question. Uh, that is a, a small change in gears, but this is what a lot of folks uh, come to this podcast for, especially those of you that are early listeners, you haven't been on here a lot, um, is, is the talk about probate. Um, so we do have a question about um, how to locate probate and estate properties that are for sale. So I do want to touch on that here really quickly. And then I've got another chatted in question that, um, that's going to be a little bit more toward you, Greg. Sure. Um, and anyone else that has a question, whether it's for uh, me, Chuck, and any of us on here, or it's for Greg about uh, kind of rituals and, and uh, certain habits of success, things like that, raise your hand. Uh, we'll call on you. You'll ask that question. But first is, uh, is really how do you, uh, the question is, how do you locate probate properties? Um, at all the leads, we make that quite easy. So this is where this was not a staged question, but this is a little tiny bit of a commercial. Uh, We make locating probate properties easy. So our researchers every single month go down to the courthouse and we dig out every single probate record that was filed that month. Every single record. Um, You can do that at the courthouse or we can do it for you. Um, You then run it through a series of skip tracing services to identify who the heirs are what their phone numbers are, what their email addresses are, what their address is. Um, we have an, an optional service called Property Plus that we can run it through that will uncover every single decedent who has recently owned property. So you run it through that to identify where the property is. Occasionally that, that 
uh, house or those houses. Uh, we, we know that a lot of times these estates have multiple properties in them. Occasionally, they will have recently been sold, but most of the time, I find that it's somewhere around 65, 70% of the time, there is still real estate that's attached to any given estate. And, uh, and at that point, you fire up your marketing engine, you put your uh, mailings, uh, that's a series of letters, postcards, high value pieces on autopilot. You pick the phone up, you start calling, um, you are looking for those individuals that, uh, that are, are considering a sale on their property. Now, with that said, it's really important that you guys know that, um, that not everyone on day number one is ready to sell a house. You're going to call folks and they're not going to be ready yet. That's when you do what Greg has been talking about. And you give value. You become their friend. They are your future friend. They just don't know it yet. Your goal there is to become as friendly and as, as, as liked by that person as possible. So that in four or five, six months, once they really start thinking about selling the house, you are the person because you've established that relationship on the phone, in front of their face, or through marketing to really, uh, really get, get the business at that point. So that's kind of the uh, minute and a half long uh, <laughs> commercial for what we do. But we did have that question. Uh, there are lots of other ways to go about it, but that's the core of it. Uh, have conversations. Make sure that you're in front of folks with your marketing message as well. Websites, content. I'm a I know Greg is a monster believer in content. You need to be talking about the probate state settlement process on video and in email and in your mail and on your websites and blogs. Do not get overwhelmed. Start with the basics of making a phone call and sending a letter out. Start with those basics and then gradually you're going to add onto it little bit by little bit. Um, And then I'm going to shut up on the probate for a moment. I know that we have a couple of other questions. I'm going to go to um, a Facebook question that came in. And this, Greg, is probably going to be a little bit more for you. Um, What are some of the most common bad habits and trends that you see in real estate that you think need to be avoided? That's a very open-ended question. Um, (laughs) Bad habits and trends in real estate. One is that people just don't show up. Uh, they don't do the work. They treat it as a hobby, not as a, as a career. So they, they, real estate agents are three things. They're lazy, they're cheap, and they're paranoid. And so if you can get over that and just be aggressive and assertive and excited, you're going to be able to serve your community at a higher level. So some of the other pitfalls are you know, people are uh, what we call secret agents. So like if you guys are doing probate or resale or anything else, don't be a secret agent. James Bond is the only good secret agent. Okay. You as a real estate agent, not a secret agent, you have to be out there. You have to be aggressive. You have to be out, out talking to folks, handing your cards out, you know, doing social media and so on and so forth. Uh, another pitfall is, you know, stopping your content creation or stopping your calendar, not living by your calendar, giving yourself an excuse or an out like, Oh, my tum tum doesn't feel good today. I'm I'm, I can't go to work. Or I mean, if if you're honestly sick, then obviously stay home. But I mean, if you feel a little out of certs, just knuckle up, just get to freaking work. And because we work for ourselves, we can give ourselves that out. But if you work for a supermarket or a trucking company or anything else, I'm sorry, there's no negotiation in regards to if you're going to come to work that day, you're going to come to work or you're you're going to get fired. So view it as and I heard this in another podcast. And I mean, no disrespect when I say this blue collar workers like a trucker. Now, truckers are essential and I love them to pieces. And I work with a lot of truckers. Um, if they decide not to deliver their load to that destination on that day at that time that's required, then there's a ripple effect down the whole chain. The stores, the vendors, third party negotiators, everybody gets screwed if they don't show up. Think about that when, when you're doing your real estate business, when you're doing your prospecting. You are the primary individual to deliver success to multiple other individuals in this whole transaction. 
including yourself. So that's some of the that's some of my thoughts there on that one. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Um, let's go to Keith next. Um, Keith, if you could unmute yourself, uh, I know you've got a question to ask. Hi, I'm calling about probates. I've been running it for a little bit now and doing all my letters, etc. And I had <clears throat> talked with Coach Chuck, who recommended I start doing follow up calls at this particular time i know you guys don't have scripts but i'm having a problem coming up with an icebreaker intro when i call them that doesn't sound like a telemarketer mm -hmm. yep good good I i'll tell you um yeah you're you're absolutely right we don't love scripts um there are absolutely things that we are scripted on though Okay, just because uh, I may not give you a written script that you're going to follow doesn't mean that you're not going to follow a general process with your opener. And yeah. I've found that the more cutesy you try to get, the um, the, the more off-putting you can be if you're talking to someone that uh, that doesn't know you. So I found that the best way when you're cold calling someone who is a probate lead um, it's just tell them what you're calling for. There was a study study done on um, on college campuses many years ago, and those that have been, I think Keith, you've been through foundation, so you know this study. But um, it was uh, it, it basically waited until everyone was lined up at the, at the library in front of the printer to print their papers, and the researchers would walk to the front of the line. And they'd go to the person that had been waiting the longest, and they'd say, "Hey, do you mind if I cut the line in front of you? I need to print my paper." And everybody, of course, said no. So the next day they went back and they walked up to the front of the line and they said, hey, do you mind if I cut in line in front of you because if I don't get this paper printed, I'm going to fail this class. And all of a sudden everyone started saying yes, or a large majority of the people started saying yes. And the researchers thought that it was because of the powerful, really good reason. They thought that, that, that it was because of the really good reason. So the third day they went back and they walked to the front of the line and they said, Hey, do you mind if I cut in line with you? I don't want to wait in line because I don't want to wait in line. And all of a sudden, they thought it would go back to everyone saying no. And a really high percentage of the people uh, allowed the cut, allowed the cut. And they realized that human psychology uh, is, is just wants to be given a reason why. So you, you may be looking for an icebreaker on your phone calls. Your simple icebreaker is, hey, I don't want to take much of your time. That's a Ricky Cruz line. If anyone watches Ricky Cruz prospect, um, he'll have just a tiny bit of, uh, of uh, uh, weather chat, small talk. So, hey, man, it's really hot out here today, isn't it? Yeah. OK. Hey, listen, I don't want to take a bunch, a bunch of your time. I was calling because I work with families in probate. Do you have a quick second for me to tell you what I was calling for? That's all you really need. All you really need. Tell them why you're calling. I was calling because blank. And, uh, and, and, and I don't believe that you need any other kind of cutesy icebreakers in your prospecting call. Have a little small talk, <laughs> kind of cut it off instead of just babbling on forever and having them every minute that goes by wondering what the heck you want. Hey, listen, I don't want to take up a, a, a bunch of your time. I was calling because I work with families going through the probate process. If you're doing another kind of call, Hey, I don't want to take up a bunch of your time. I was calling because I've been selling properties around such and such an area. Um, I was wondering if there's anything I could do for you. Okay. Simply get to that point quickly within 15, 20, 30 seconds. Tell them what you're calling for and then ask for permission to take a quick second to tell them what you're doing. All right. And that'll get you really far. All right. Thank you. Thanks. So can I jump in on that real quick, Bruce? Please, Greg. So are you familiar with Simon Sinek? Yeah, absolutely. So Simon was walking down uh, New York uh, streets with one of his buddies years and years and years ago. And he saw a gal that had a sign out that was panhandling. And it was the typical like, hey, I need money. God bless you. I need some cash. I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I need, I need a beer. It's a, one of those signs you see all the time, right? So out of pure curiosity, and this goes back to what you were saying on, when it comes to verbiage, he stopped and he went back to the lady and he said, 
ma'am, how much money do you make a day? If I could ask, she says, I may make a hundred dollars a day. He's like, and you can live off that. And she's like, yes, I can live off that. She's like, okay, can I help you with your sign so you can make more money? She's like, oh, okay. So he took her, her, her sign, flipped it over. And he, he wrote, I know you don't give every day, but next time you do, please remember me. She made a hundred dollars in an hour, got up and left. So I'm like, Oh my gosh, how can I shift that into real estate? And so what I said was when I, what I came up was with, with this was, I know you don't buy or sell every day, but next time you do, please remember me. And if you could put that into a daily email if you can put that into your 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 conversations on the phones stuff like that it's a soft close and it will allow you because when if folks are going through probate they they haven't done this right i mean this is a, a traumatic time for them so just tell them i know you don't buy and sell every day but next time you do please remember me i'm here to serve you your tonality is going to have is going to be very important on this 7% of communication is the words, 37, 36% is going to be your tonality, 55% is going to be you physically interacting with them. Get in front of them, have that conversation or get on that phone and book that appointment. But Simon Sinek, I love that guy. I mean, that I mean, his books are incredible. I watch all of his TED Talks. If you guys don't know him, go follow him. He's amazing your, your brain's gonna melt when you listen to them <laughs> amazing thanks greg that's awesome any of our other any of our coaches have anything to add by the way guys um i have a fairly hard stop at two o'clock we've got prospecting mastery um at two um coaches uh, we have one more question i know from virginia uh but before i go to virginia's question coaches anything to add nope all right so Virginia asked, uh, Virginia stated, I'm a senior's, uh, seniors real estate special, specialist and would like to incorporate probate services into my business. Uh, is there anyone that you can talk to um, about including this in flyers to prospects? Okay, mailing, um, Tim, I think that, uh, I think that it's gonna be really good for you to jump in and talk about flyers, brochures, mailing, kind of how to get in front of and stay in front of, uh, in front of folks that you're, as you try to expand your seniors business into probate? Sure. I mean, I think the key, key element here is that anything you need to put out there, I mean, part of what we would do is take a little bit of time to understand specifically what you're already talking about, what you're, what you're talking with people about in your seniors practice. Are you working with it from a caregiver standpoint? Are you looking at, looking at it more from a, housing standpoint, a little bit more understanding about what that's about, what that's all about. Probate side is a target, not a, not a, uh, a, a destination. And there's a little bit of difference. Probate is where you're trying to get some people out of, and you're trying to, you know, do that because you're building your own set of credibility on the fact that you're focused on the senior side of the business. So I think what I would suggest is there's a lot more to ask. There's a lot more questions to ask to give you the best answer. We could probably take it offline. And if you'll drop a note to support at alltheleads.com, I'll get back to you after the call and I'll give you a buzz and we'll kind of walk through it. And then I'll turn you over to one of our marketing implementation folks to get you squared away. All right. Good. Good answer. And by the way, guys, so um, if you are doing mail, if you're looking for brochures, flyers to include uh, kind of that, that uh, arsenal for your business, uh, let us know. Um, otherwise, uh, you're going to be prospecting, doing the work. I think if, if we've taken anything from this chat with Greg is sometimes you got to get your hands in the mud and knuckle up. He's used both of those expressions. And, uh, if you're not willing to do that, you're a, what, what do you call it, Greg, a shelf, um, uh, what, what was that? Oh, you, you like, you have like a, a book here, uh, there's a book called Blue Fishing is one of my favorite marketing books on God's green earth by uh, Steve Sims. Look into this book, guys, for probate. You're going to love this book. And so you have self-assurance when you're, you feel very self-assured and you're comfortable in who you are. But then you have shelf 
assurance. When you take this book that you buy from Steve Sims, and I'm, I don't make any money from him when I promote him, you take this, you put it on the shelf. Now you have shelf assurance because, ooh, I bought a book. Crap, what am I going to do with it? Nothing. Okay. What? Dang it. Okay, I'm going to throw it at somebody. That's about as good as it gets. But don't have shelf assurance, have self assurance. Go out there, read the books, listen to the podcast, you know, go to the seminars, listen to this podcast. The knowledge these gentlemen are putting out are, is just amazing. So yeah, that's the definition that we were going off of. Awesome. And then put it into practice. And Jim, I'm not stealing your, uh, your closing. Uh, but the, the fact is, is you've got to put it into practice. Uh, if you hear 10 things that you like out of a book or a podcast or something like that, uh, pick one, go implement it, go screw up. Um, the uh, Go for No was a, a good book that a lot of you have read. It's a really short, simple read. Um, and they were selling copiers and they'd walk to the door and they'd try to sell everyone. And, uh, and uh, you know, they'd get discouraged because they'd give this amazing, brilliant pitch and the person would say no. So then they, they started with their new salespeople going and knocking on a door and they'd walk to the door and the person would open up and they'd say, hey, you don't want to buy a copier, do you? Which we would all agree is an absolutely horrendous sales pitch. But they realized that using that terrible, terrible sales pitch one out of every X number of people would always say, yes, I do. I'm going to buy. So go out, uh, take imperfect action, imperfect action, screw up. It doesn't matter if you screw up, even screwing up, you're going to stumble into success. And then as you stumble into, into success, doing it the wrong way, sometimes begin to tweak and adjust your technique and your approach. I lost lots and lots of listing appointments in my early years, lots of listing appointments. But guess what I didn't do? I didn't quit going. Every single time I screwed up and I failed and I, I, I got a door slammed in my face or someone told me to leave their house, um, one person literally said, get the F out of my property on a listing appointment that they'd ask me to come to, by the way. All right. Every time that happened, I'd learn from it and I'd make it adjustments. Oh man, that hurt. I don't want that to happen again. What do I do to keep that from happening next time? Where did it go wrong? You're not going to learn the lessons if you don't do the actions. So do the actions. It's going to help you learn. Before long, you're going to be unstoppable and you're not even going to remember what it was like to fail. Okay. I think Bruce, there was just one additional point to that. I mean, I think the key part was you debriefed after you made the mistakes, meaning you said what went well, what didn't go well, what should I change for the next time? If you don't take that time for debriefing your performance or the actions that you took, then you, you don't pull the lessons from them and you have the opportunity to repeat it. Yep. Um, guys, before I turn it to Jim, I'm just going to tell you all, go check out Greg McDaniel. Um, he's got a lot of really good stuff. Great person to follow. Um, someone that's going to keep you motivated, keep you inspired, and give you a lot of useful information. So check out Greg, please. Um, with that, I would like to turn it over to Jim. Hey, where would they all go right. to check Greg out? Where would they yeah, go? Yeah, Greg. Check hey, Greg. Greg. <laughs> I forgot. Greg. Where are they going to check you out, man? <laughs> Uh, there's so many places, ladies and gentlemen. Um, go to Greg McDaniel on Facebook. Follow me there. You can see my posts. You can go to uh, Greg McDaniel, R-E-U. Um, that's on my Instagram. You can follow me there. You can watch my crazy posts about my dog and the, the nutty stuff that I, I get up to on, on a daily basis. Um, we have a, something we're building, which, um, Bruce, I want to talk to you about off air. Uh, called REU Nation, where we have we're building, we're kind of becoming like the YouTube of real estate information. So you guys can go check out a lot of cool stuff, 100% free, obviously. Um, or just Google me, Greg McDaniel, and I'll be the devastatingly handsome man with uh, glasses and uh, brown hair. And or just call me, text me. I pick up my phone. I literally pay my bill every month. It's okay. It's uh, area code 
1978. Again, 925-915-1978. So hit me up, guys and gals. I'm here to help and serve uh, zero cost basis and just love to have, be on the show. And all of you gentlemen who invited me on, I appreciate you more than you know. All right. Well, Greg, uh, thank you for not only the information, but for the inspiration. Um, I can't thank you enough for being here. And I, as I always do, I want to close uh, this session with a challenge. You heard an incredible number of good ideas today. For this week, just take one thing that inspired you on this call, go out and put it into practice and come back next week and share the results with the group. Thank you, Greg. Thank you all for being here. Make it a great week. And we will talk to you same time next Thursday. Take care.